say this, I confuse, I haven't gotten a chance to watch these videos because I'm a big fan of Mandalore, but I thought he was playing a game called The Darkest, uh, In Our Darkest Hour, which is a very crappy time-traveling shooter game that I played when I was younger, because you only go to, like, the uh -oh. Civil War and World War One, and that's about it. Oh, and you go to Rome at one point. That, that's pretty much it. And the whole thing is you're trying to stop people from messing with time for obvious reasons, but yeah. This, this might be the same game. I don't think so, though. Oh, he's in Pompeii. I think this is the same game. Yeah, it is. I was wrong about the name. <laughs> Just shooting a bunch of... <laughs> what the fuck? So yeah, it was called Darkest of Days. I was wrong. I thought it was in our darkest hour. But yeah. Oh, he's changing to us and tr Oh, he's doing the time traveling bit. Oh. So Darkest. the. So the. It had some cool ideas, but god damn it, it didn't uh, use much. Darkest of Days is one of the stranger and most ambitious 7th gen FPS games. Yeah. It's also one of the more obscure time travel games since it's delisted from everywhere, and even when it was around, it never seemed to go on sale. P pretty much. It's, oh, it, wow. It wasn't that good of a game from what I remember. It had some interesting ideas about preserving history with you being a dude who, uh, basically they pick you up from a point in time where you won't be remembered because you were at, you're basically a soldier from, do you know of Custard's Last Stand? Uh, no, not really. Basically, if I remember, it was either General or Colonel Custard basically sent, had a bunch of soldiers with him to deal with an Indian tribe, but he brought too few soldiers and uh, basically died at the Battle of B Little Bighorn. Oh, okay. Basically, yeah, he under underestimated how many Native Americans were there. and So no one yeah. can wishlist it and then pick it up later for three uh, bucks or something. And you were one of the soldiers. Which you can still do now for most of the other time travel shooters from then. But what's a shame is that Darkest of Days has the best concept out of all of yeah. them. You know, time control powers are neat. But this lets you go back to the American Civil War with the most nightmarish firearms since Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. <laughs> what? What? Four <laughs> digit ammo counters. They four count up. Four digit ammo counters and they count up? What? I've never seen this movie. What? It turns Neither out that guns I. were invented around the same time cornbread was being perfected don't have the same kind of stopping power as late 22nd century home defense. Yeah. Yeah, there's at one there is at one <laughs> Yeah, there's at one point where you just like, yeah, we need to thin out their numbers because too many of them got through, so here's an assault rifle. Oh wow. And that's a time period that could even comprehend guns. Yeah. And beyond all that, there's still a fair bit of extra. Imagine insanity. going to a time period that couldn't comprehend the thought of guns and just shooting and being like, Oh, you're a god. Underlying the entire thing. A lot of it is at odds with each other, both gameplay-wise and tonally, but there's a lot to talk about. So here's how it all kicks off. Let's go. Yeah, the Battle of Little Bighorn. The Battle of Little Bighorn. In American history, this was a yeah. major defeat in the Great Sioux War, and in gaming yeah. history, it's a prequel to Custer's Revenge. You play as Alexander Morris, a soldier <laughs> in the Federal Army. As expected, yeah. the fight is going badly for the feds, and especially going badly for Morris. Yeah, because he got shot. Then as all fluids drain from his body, his day changes. There's Custard. Basically, Custard's last stand was Damn. when he basically was encircled by the enemy and they pulled out two revolvers and started shooting against them because they were basically circling him. Alexander Morris, I gotta get you out of here. Ah. Oh, I'm still wondering how he got shot by an old-timey rifle and got, got hurt at all. Now. You are in the future from your perspective. Around 300 years or so. Morris has been brought to the late 22nd century by an organization called Chronotech. Time travel has been established for a while now and is primarily educational. Time oh. travelers are mainly observers who go to the past to find the secrets and details of older cultures. That makes sense, They've actually. discovered the fates of lost civilizations, the building of the pyramids in Egypt, and others. And this was all made possible by a Dr. Cole, who is currently missing in the time stream. You're at Chronotech HQ, and the lip-sync saving budget eyebrows is Mother. 
She's oh. some kind of upper level manager, but it's never really elaborated on. Interesting. She immediately yeah, puts Morris into advanced combat training. Beyond learning new material for universities and magic school bus episodes, <laughs> Chrono Tech is also Magic School Bus episodes, I actually really like that. <laughs> Surfing on now Main Street. I'm hitting you with this car. In charge of protecting history. To do this, Chronotech recruits operatives from across time. But only those who are missing in action or vanished in some other way, because that shouldn't disrupt the timeline. That it makes sense. It does seem to be one continuous timeline, so of course this opens a ton of questions on how the hell any of this works. But to be fair, you are a man from the 1870s, so they don't bother trying to give you all the details. Plus, I mean... you're more of a time slave than a time cop. If you don't want to take Chronotech's job offer, that's fine, but they'll put you right where they left you. Yeah. Which means going back to Custer's last stand with a shaft in your shaft. So you <laughs> and another operative. A shaft in your shaft, dear god. <laughs> Agent Dexter are sent to find Dr. Cole. Multiple yeah. disruptions are identified across history with some key figures in danger. So you're sent in to make sure they survive and that the yeah. events should play out like they should, sometimes subtly, sometimes less so. Sometimes subtly, just pulls out a machine gun. But yeah, less so subtly. I'll get into the nitty gritty of the story and those kinds kind of details of, later, but it's for kind now, of wonderful. let's talk about the graphics. When you first see it, this is not the best looking FPS for 2009. No, especially it's really when you're not. going for visual realism and everyone is having to fight Call of Duty there. They don't have the budget for that kind of crazy fidelity, but they- But you don't really need that kind of fidelity to make a good game, I will be honest. Like, if you try too hard to make everything look good, then it just all looks ugly. Yeah. They are reaching for a few other ambitious things. Like, the character models are decent, some details can seem strange, and there's mm. definitely an Attack of the Clones situation going on. Yeah, I can see that. this kind of thing makes sense when you see the scale this game is operating at. The historical battles you're sent to actually feel like battles. The maps can be enormous, and it can look like there are hundreds of people fighting. It's already impressive to give you that back then, but it does make me wonder how the hell this was ported to Xbox 360. Yeah, it was on Xbox. That's the one I played. Which is, uh, does make it seem even more insane, considering this was the Xbox 360 and PS3 era. Where there's just so many things on, by the people score, on screen. I'm guessing not well, but how this works yeah. has some clear problems here too. For one, there can be a lot of very obvious pop-in, like rocks or plants, entire layers of effects like fog. Sometimes it works fine hard, and is barely but... noticeable, other times it's right in your face. Oh! So when it comes to the LOD scaling, we're kind of close to the Jackie Chan Adventures <laughs> intro threshold. <laughs> Even areas devoid of enemies struggle with it, and Jackie I wish there was Chan. an in-game option or easily tweakable Adventures. engine files for it. Machines now could yeah. handle a lot more on screen, and this is definitely a game that would benefit from that. I wish we had big battles like this on uh, on screen for some video games in the console eras, but... And no, oh. it's not a huge deal here, but it does make me wonder what this game could look like pushed to the limit. There would only yeah. be a few times this is truly taken advantage of, but I'm still curious. How would you like to take out an entire regiment in Civil War with a freaking javelin? Uh... No one answering my question. Typically, I don't expect forward. an FPS from them to have this many units on screen, unless it's serious. I, I don't want to be in the Civil War. I know you don't. Watch out for them goddamn horses. Fucking lord! I don't remember this part. The thing is, in those kinds of games, it's a horde of enemies beelining towards you. Darkest of Days is closer to something like Mountain Blade, a simulated battlefield where large groups of NPCs duke it out at a time. Yeah. Then on top of that, the AI needs to account for multiple periods of history. Because Russian troops in World War I aren't going to fight in shield formations like ancient Romans. <laughs> then this all has to work across some large maps and- I, I don't know why you would even need to rush them. You could just shoot them through their freaking shields. Situations. And here, they made it work... sometimes. I will started. say, I kind of understand now why they chose the eras they did, because that's a lot easier to <clears throat> coordinate the AI. Because mostly you play in the Russian, uh, or in the Western front of World War One, which, you know, Russian tactics are mostly throwing troops There's, at a wall. Say 80% of the game bounces between World War One and the American Civil War. How these wars were fought were very different, but when it comes yeah. to the environment and objects, a lot can fit into both of those. Yeah. It's a smart reuse of assets, but you don't get as much of World War II or Ancient Rome as you might have wanted to. And while it is cool to see troops line up to shoot or charge in a pure chaos, it's an effect that works best when you're a human lawnmower. When you have guns <laughs> from the future, the battlefield is a big spectacle. 
You can still be uh, caught out and die, but the power fantasy is fly swatting everything. When look you're at that. the weapons of the time, you're now playing a historical FPS. Shooters with muskets are around and can be fun, but they're usually multiplayer or very different kinds of games. Yeah. They could be more about team objectives or something really tense, LBRB. but they also want to sell you okay. on its setting. You know, you get into the groove of using those older weapons Ooh. and tools, and you're not yeah. given a machine gun every once in a while. <laughs> when you rampage around like Rambo, gunning down everything with a pulse, there's a flow to it that works really well. You're running around zapping people with guns from the future that they can barely comprehend. They stay alive just long enough to be reactive, and they have enough there that the battlefield around you also feels giant. Imagine rushing a bunch of men with just muskets to a battlefield with a machine gun. Dear God. When you're using period weapons and engaging the enemy on their own terms, it's a different kind of game. You do start out playing this way where it's slower and, oh. I guess, more tactical. The problem is, a musket FPS is never going to feel great after you open up the Pandora's box of full auto. I see what he means here now. It's basically the whiplash of... You're feeling a lot better with those machine guns than you are with these period weapons. Yeah, that can be kind of tonal whiplash for you. On top of that, you now notice what their AI is really like. It looked cool on a big sweeping battlefield where you would vaporize them in a moment or two, but now you see their flaws. There yeah. are maps made for smaller scale engagements where they do better, but they mainly run around like headless chickens. Makes Every sense. unit is having to account for so much at the same time that sometimes their behavior looks like nonsense. I'm not the first one to say this, but it does feel like being dropped into the middle of a Total War game. You get oh. into large group fights that look cinematic and great, and then suddenly the AI begins swarming around like bees. <laughs> in a large scale battle, it's a ton of moving parts that doesn't always work, and the smaller scale fights in these open spaces can be more reliable, but they're just not that fun. They yeah. can take cover and avoid dying in a pile enough to look good for a strategy game, but for an FPS, they're too unfocused to make it really engaging. Like here, I'm mowing down a good chunk of the Bojangles clientele with a future <laughs> AR. And most of them are running <laughs> Bojangles right clientele. <laughs> ...past me to shoot at the yeah. Union. So even in the game's ideal scenarios, it can still easily fall apart. You can get whacked by a cannon shot or go out and get killed by a concentrated volley, but it's rare the enemy will signal you out in situations where they probably should, and that usually only happens in the yeah. smaller fights against better armed enemies. Yeah, that of makes course, sense. Of course, if they were too aggressive and you had a shiny gun, they'd probably pulverize you in a moment. I think pulling the software it would feel good would be tricky, even now. Yeah. Usually, it can have some genuinely great moments, but a lot more is just stiff and awkward. Still, battlefield effects like explosions, smoke, and other particles Dear God, that extremely weapon. well. That's because it's one of those certified NVIDIA Phys X games. A lot of its features are now built in- I just like in my chat someone put, uh, give a peasant child a soda and he'll have a stroke, probably. Another one is- Showing up during the Inquisition with a gun and be like, oh shit, it's Wizards or Wheel. The special double deluxe Wizards NVIDIA are... only features are a lot more rare now. Having uh. rolling fog and smoke that actually interacted with objects in the game world it used to be a selling point. Currently, yeah. it's all about reflections and ray tracing, and who knows what they'll push next. Yeah, this... honestly. This is a game where it adds a lot, especially to this age of gunpowder. Ironically, the worst thing about the game's graphics is how dark they can get. Like, it's generally mm. murky, but sometimes. I don't holy remember shit. this. It oh, I don't so remember bad this that at years all. Years ago, I heard a rumor about this. Allegedly, the developers had a reference monitor with the gamma set wildly incorrectly. Oh. Well, I was able to reach out to a developer about this, and it's completely true. Oh, dear they God! Had a very fucked up Apple Cinema display. Their office oh, was also no. completely flooded at one point, so they added water into some levels. Yeah, apparently they had a gamma, like mess up display so for variety, and also to reflect what they were going through, which is a pretty cool move. As for audio, it's mainly one of those games in that serviceable category. Weapons Makes can sense. range from sounding punchy and strong to stock and kind of limp. Even in real life, muskets and other old guns aren't that much louder than modern ones. That they I just did sound not know. a bit different in a way that I can't quite describe. So Darkest of Days actually does nail that aspect. Huh. They nail the gun sounds at least. Dear God, using a future flamethrower on a bunch of World War One guys. For extra credit, this might have the loudest minigun I've ever heard in a game. You oh, can't use it, only a certain enemy can. But oh. it legit sounds like an A-10 making a strafe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does, it's actually! Like that, that sounds like a... That sounds like a Vulcan cannon. Oh. There's a good chunk of things that are just weird about the sound. 
Again, it's mostly fine, but then a certain sound effect will be a lot lower quality and grainy, or it sounds like a match is about to begin in Halo. Like a it's war the note. voice acting that especially yeah, kinda. takes the cake here. You've got everything from grizzled professionals to grabbing devs out of their office chairs, oh. but their audio mixing seems borderline random. Just nod and smile. Come on outside and I'll tell you what he said. If you know the languages, <laughs> there's even bonus awkwardness. Really? Let me see if he has anything uh, orders in Russian. Okay, no. Alright, buddy, it's time. Anyways, you're gonna be hearing Dexter for most of the game. He's Makes your sense. partner in the field and gives mission briefings. The Confederates are scrambling ass over tea kettle from their cornfield retreat. Fried chicken. I could really go for some old-fashioned fried chicken right now. And a beer. His delivery and direction yeah. are great, but for some reason, as the game goes on, his audio gets worse and worse. Oh, Still dear. gotta get that other Welsh and hightail it back. Yeah, and that audio is pretty Xbox bad. Live. Remember what she said about oh, a straightforward mission? It has to be the game. Shit either. You hear that, and then run across a random Union goon, and he sounds perfect. You all done with the shitter? If you have an ear for it, there are some games where you could tell a line was recorded a different day, or look how dark this day got. Like, what the fuck was wrong with that monitor? Oh, dear God. Anyways, you might hear a line that's slightly off, or mixed a little bit differently, or they overproduced it. But a main character with good audio with random lines that actually sound phoned in? I don't think I've seen that before, and if yeah. I did, it might have just been a line or two, and not entire chunks of audio like this game does. Random NPCs having iffy audio is pretty normal for back then, and this game has plenty of that too. Mm. What the hell? Potter took off in our oh. It's oh, wow. distracting compared to the areas and games where audio can usually suffer, and no one will raise a stink about it. It could be that the studio lost their audio setup in the flood, and the eternal video game story of a place where oh. things shipped happened once again. It's Damn. a shame here because Dexter's voice acting is great, and the character is interesting. Like, yeah. he translates for Russian characters, but then later... I don't know a damn bit of Russian, so I hope you guys understand this. Follow me! <laughs> huh. Also, based on the hat and how he spoke, uh, I thought he might be from World War II or the early 1900s. I love that. And then his backstory hit me like a plane. Hello, I was a firefighter dark. in New York City. It was an exciting job. Dangerous, but it was worth it. And on that fateful day, I wasn't working. I wasn't oh, even damn. on call. But I heard the scanner and I knew I had to respond. Right before a kajillion tons of steel and concrete collapsed on top of me, a portal appeared and a Chronotech agent pulled me in. Just like you. If Chronotech yeah. hadn't snagged me, I'd be dead. Wow, okay. First uh, of all, Morse is from 1876 and has no context for any of this. Whoa. Who did this damn 9-11? Was it the Apache? What? It's more a story being told to the player rather than the character, which ah. makes it a bit strange. But it also establishes that Chronotech will grab anyone missing, and not just soldiers. Makes sense. It is possible that Dexter has some kind of military background, but it's never brought up. He was yoinked from the time stream in a non-combat heroic moment. Honestly, him not being a fighter would make his new Time Warrior job a lot more interesting. But yeah, you would. only get tiny bits of his character. Speaking yeah, nothing of things much. without too many layers, there is a soundtrack. It's mainly military snare drum battle music. That sounds about say, right. I barely retained any of it. I mean, it makes sense for the bunch of different eras you're going through. Oh yeah. What a time. Hey, Dad. The only track I remember is a bit from a Roman arena that has this gladiator flair to it. Okay. Shit. And it's not oh. an amazing piece or anything, but it is a standout track from the endless marching music. It's music that makes me feel like I'm back in high school. Seeing the JROTC kids hug their girlfriends in the hallway like they're actually being deployed before mm. third period. It does make sense. The word on the street is the recruiter's girlfriend goes here too. Wait, what? But as for what's here, there's not much to say. I don't Again, even understand what you meant by that, but yeah. Itself or is a ROTC. A lot yeah. more worth discussing. Oh. Looping, screaming. When you get down to FPS basics, you scuttle around and click on a bad man to make him go away. Pretty the much. The actual shooting in Darkest of Days is solid. There's good weapon feedback, enemies ragged all around and blood flies out, but movement can get weird when an area is even slightly steeper than usual. 
The feeling is similar to going down a staircase and accidentally missing a step, oh. and going up can feel like rapidly climbing a very tiny staircase. Like, I might be fighting Nazis here, but I don't need to go to the extreme opposite of goose stepping. That makes the sense. jittery <laughs> movement oh, especially <laughs> shows up in vehicle escort missions, like riding a blimp or defending a car. It's like you're working against the actual speed of an object and not properly attached, if that makes mm. sense. Actually, yeah. in general, you don't feel properly attached to the ground. If you move across anything more than a slight incline, you're gonna feel it. And with many of the maps being large rolling battlefields, that means you're going to be feeling it a lot. Uh, it definitely contributes to that sense you've been dropped into some kind of strategy game. Even if the gunplay itself is fine, tripping over the floor makes some fights feel awful. What's weird is that it is bad, but not as atrocious as you might think. Well, Apparently, Chronotech comes up with Makarov PB tier innovations almost every day. Almost all of your weapons are laser accurate, including muskets. So stumbling around won't throw off your accuracy all that much. I don't know what to call no. this. It's not like having weapons spread, it's more like having weapon compression. The one thing that can slow down your shooting is the active reload. It's handy if you do hit the timing, and especially bad if you miss it. Yeah. You know, the gun jams up, which is the cost of losing that bet, and you expected that. The problem yeah. is that the can't shoot period can sometimes outlast the unjamming animation. And by outlast, I mean Morris might die of old age. Wow, really? I don't remember it being that long. Might as well throw rocks. Or grenades. <laughs> this game does not skimp on giving you grenades. That is a lot of grenades. This isn't the only thing you'll be throwing a lot of, and you learn that early in the game during chaser training. Mm -hmm. Chasers are tiny, relevancy-seeking weapons. Chronotech has long accepted that, due to their meddling, the timeline will never be 100% back correctly. But they do want to minimize the endless cleanup work they'll have to do. Makes sense. So NPCs who will have a notable impact on history, or their children will, are marked in blue. Instead of killing these guys, you should only maim them, as a bullet wound in the Civil War is nothing to worry about. Uh, you just sure. chasers, which will hunt them down and knock them out, but you only have a limited number. They're also loud as hell. Sometimes mistakes happen, which means more work for the company, and you get less good boy points. Uh. You are sent back with period weapons, but they're also stealthily modified. By protecting the blue man group and preserving the current <laughs> of time, you'll be up to the roof with upgrade points. Your uh, hip firing yeah. is already insanely accurate, but it can be better. And you'd be amazed at how many rounds can be shoved into these old guns. Nothing like a 14-shot six-shooter. Protect glowing <laughs> man, get better gun. It makes you be a bit more cautious in a firefight, and not always go overkill. Upgrades like clip size are especially important to avoid the reload monkeying, and finding specific ammo can be tricky for a lot of missions. So for every blue you paint red, you lose out on that. And if you kill too many... Yeah, this happens. They get pissed. I tried the to survive this, you can't. Come to murder you. They have strong shields, and no one knows where they come from. So watch out for that. Shit. So you are kept in your toes a bit, especially if you're playing the game with chest hair, but the game has chest two hair. halves which do feel like they're pulling against each other. I'm gonna call the first half Secret Agent Gameplay. You're sent back in time to protect key figures and make sure events play out the way that they should. You come with weapons that look like they're from the period, but have been subtly modified with future technology. You could Makes even sense. have canon a reason why every gun you touch is so accurate, in the same way that I accept regenerating health here as they put nanomachines near blood or something. Of course, you don't always use guns of the era, and sometimes get to use war crimes of the future. <laughs> war but crimes some of, of the these future. are more appropriately subtle. Like the sniper rifle that automatically accounts for wind, humidity, everything. It's only used in a single mission, and the gimmick is that it aims for you. But it's still a fun mission, watching the crazy ways bullets curve around objects. It's like being able to play Wanted, and why else <laughs> would you ever bring up Wanted? Yeah. Then, since you can't bring it right back, and to make sure Nazis don't get their hands on it, you self-destruct it, which turns out not to be a great idea, and this kicks off the Holocaust arc. Oh. Although Morris doesn't know what's happening, I'm sure he gets a bad feeling about it. You know, yeah. going on the street with too many pawn shops, seeing a blue light in a fast food restaurant bathroom, Nazi death camp. And without Chronotech or Mother's Wisdom, Morris only has self-help tips like don't die. Oh, eh, it's not God. wrong. Yeah. Besides, the other prisoners were plotting their escape the second they stepped off the train. So not keeping the sniper rifle may have been a bad move. But going back to agent weapons, there's also a rocket launcher that disguises itself as artillery. When you go to Pompeii, they just hand you a microwave gun that melts people down. This feels like the area where creative future weapons could probably have been expanded on the most. Yeah. Getting sci-fi weapons you have to use sneak all the time, or ones that don't leave much of a trace. 
I think of something like a Van Helsing drum magazine of crossbow bolts. Oh, some kind of flechette weapon that launches an element that rapidly melts after impact. They do give you some large maps where you can choose to mm. fight or sneak around. What do you guys think so far? They're not here. I'm all alone again. Oh dear. We're, we're all I'm right confused. There. You're always confused, Fable. That's, I mean, you're not wrong, but I'm just confused. That's what I think. Dirk, I will give you. There, oh dear god. But it still feels very underdeveloped. It's more little opportunistic moments that pop up. Yeah. Stealth is sort of an option sometimes, but you're mainly expecting stand-up fights. That makes sense. Besides, the other half of the game is being a gun wizard. Gun automatic wizard. automatic weapons from the future that sometimes mm. also auto-lock onto their targets. That's the power fantasy side of it, and it speaks for itself. The yeah. issue is that which of these you're going to be doing is completely arbitrary. Like you'll be sent to turn around a battle that's gone wrong to protect the integrity of history. And then sometimes Dexter goes, ah, fuck it, take this nightmare gun. Yeah, yeah. you can thank me later. Take this gun and engage in some numerical adjustment out there. <laughs> it gets to a point where you wonder, why are we even bothering to try and hide this anymore? Like, yeah. Pompeii is not just a microwave gun. There is a full-on John Woo tier firefight <laughs> across all of the streets of Pompeii. People are making kill zones with auto turrets. Future oh, archaeologists God. will dig up Gaius and Alus, and they will <laughs> wonder why they're filled with 556. I'm sure this is a game where you introduce Roman legionnaires to the concept of buckshot, plus the time travel and everything else means the rule of cool should apply, they just can't pick a lane. It could still work if both modes are fun in their like own that. way, which they can be, but overkill usually wins out. Yeah. Not only is it just more fun to play since you're obliterating people with future guns, Ooh. but beyond the AI acting up and the many, many bugs the game has, Actually, that's not a minor point, this game is incredibly buggy. But even if we live in a world where this all works perfectly, it falls apart mechanically too. The system for blue enemies and upgrading old guns is a neat idea at first, but yeah. eventually... Damn it. <laughs> when you get to the point where you could get past the Sardaukar shields in the campaign, you realize that baiting them in is a good idea because they're a reliable source of future weapons. Ah. If you get the drop on them and grab one good gun, congratulations. I think I've only beaten them once in this. When it comes to ammo, you now have House Karino DoorDash. <laughs> it is a House great Carino and ambitious DoorDash. idea, but covered in a layer of jank and collapsing into itself. Sometimes the maps I do like his metaphors so much. be too big and feel empty and tedious. And then the final missions will have more closed in standard FPS level design. You always have chronotech weapons, and they're the best uh. levels in the game. A three way battle between Time Cops, the Sardukar, and the Roman Legion while Mount Vesuvius is actively going apeshit. That is crazy. The gameplay crazy overall guy. feels bad and awkward, but then it'll have fights that have no right to be this cool. Some of the insane imagery in this game, I can easily see outlasting the memories of it being stiff. And no, this is not a janky hidden yeah. gem that you should go play. But the fact this game existed at all is so interesting. It is I think you crazy. fight roughly the entire political compass in one game, and it's not an RPG. All that said, that leaves us with the story, which doesn't seem to have too much going on until the very end of the game. There yeah. is a lot of good setup for it, and even now, I can't tell if you're supposed to think Chronotech is incompetent. They establish there's only one timeline, which they have to keep going back to fix mistakes, and in doing that, create even more mistakes that also have to be fixed. This mm. is an endless death march, and you get good looks at all the problems they've caused. Yeah. Time cops are just people they grab to go fuller auto across history. Mm -hmm. They don't have the Rifleman's Creed. Sometimes they forget to bring their gun back. The Great Reckoning is upon us! Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, you know those crazy, like, other time people that you're fighting? Oh no, they're gone again. Yep. Uh, guys? Huh? I was about to say. Uh, yeah, at one point you kill a dude, and then, uh, a Union soldier finds the- finds, uh, an assault rifle that one of the bad time cops dropped. Oh, no. Yeah, watch. Brought nigh by the evils and the sins of the Confederacy, I am his holy weapon, sent to render his divine judgment. None can stand before the wrath of his angels. Yeah. Like, for most of the game, you help the Russians in World War I and the Union in the Civil War, but then you end up helping them too well and then have to go back and fight for the other side to shift things back into place. Yeah, that it's makes endless sense. endless correction with countless witnesses to all of it. And from here on out, I will get into spoilers, but they hammer this issue in on a personal level, like escaping the German fun camp. Not only does Chronotech intervene with a massive direct assault, 
At the end of it, you're told the next mission is going back in time to set up the assault to save yourself. Which yeah, is a neat little reveal, but I hope all investors are shorting this company. But okay, let's get into the core of it. Investors Shit. are shorting this company. Travel through time, but we still can't get the weather forecast right. Like I said before, most of the game is just fighting battles in the past, protecting VIPs. Yeah. But there are signs of even more disruptions, as your intel gets worse and worse, and troops are showing up where they shouldn't. Along with that, the Sardaukar, known in-game as the Opposition, are trying mm. to establish footholds in the past. Mother has no idea who they are or why they're doing this, but the Opposition leader himself interrupts you once. He claims oh. that Chronotech is the true problem, but you can't join the Opposition yet, as they're too scattered and they might want to still kill Morris for all he's done. So for uh. one, the side you're working for is really the evil ones, is a thing in games forever, and especially yeah. 7th gen. And this That's entire special. operation is obviously a shit show. So if anything, it feels more like a logical conclusion rather than some kind of twist. The crack there is that the opposition don't seem to have that much more respect for time, and if anything, might be just as bad or worse. True. I'm not seeing them as the true defenders of history. In the later No Latin mission, they're launching a full-scale incursion into Pompeii. Which seems odd when Vesuvius is about to make it a tourist attraction, but yeah. there are two answers for this. Primarily, Dr. Cole is here. He doesn't come across as a super genius though, more a senile old man lost on vacation. It's also not entirely clear why they couldn't find him until now, but him being like this explains a lot about his organization. The yeah. opposition itself is also given new context. The opposition, it's the same organization. Only we're from the future. What? Mother has trouble accepting this, but it's true. We're playing for the same team. What this is a more mean? interesting twist. What? Your faction could be in the wrong, and the one you're fighting is the same one more developed in the future, but they're also just as irresponsible in points. Dear God. It does line up, but most of the story in the game is just about the fighting and the mystery about why this is happening. The yeah. setup that is there is more things you have to notice on your own. The reason for Cole's vanishing is also too vague. He says he was running some kind of experiment, but it's not clear how he was doing this, or what its purpose was. I have uh. to keep it to myself, but... I was testing a hypothesis that could have changed everything. There okay. was no reason to... Dr. Cole, finally we meet. The opposition leader had studied and revered Cole's work, but the opposition is an actual opposite to Cole's philosophy. He asks ah. that after everything, should the past still not be changed no matter what? This is a game that had a holocaust level, but Chronotech only intervened to get you out and to get the VIP out. Yeah. You don't know what corrections they made for this mass breakout, or if they even happened. And that's how the good doctor likes it, even if his people are horrible at it. He thinks altering time will have massive repercussions we can't predict, but he has a philosophy on top of that. Who am I, or anybody else, to play God? No, come on, it's too late for that, Steve. Yeah. I'm all for helping those that suffer. But dark days teach valuable lessons. You are a hero to millions, including me. And so it pains me greatly to do this. Hey! What the fuck? Easy, Agent Dexter. That will be the end to violence oh, if I have my choice. And I have an explanation. And this is where things get fucking insane. Okay. The men you were protecting were the ancestors of scientists. They created a DNA sequencer for the purpose of fighting disease, but it okay. can also signal out racial groups. Oh. This was then taken by terrorist oh. scientists in the Middle oh, East. Oh, I did not know about this part. I don't remember this at all. I just remember the virus. Over 99% of those with DNA sequences from European heritage died horribly. The plague brought a secondary wave of death. Rioting and wars as governments struggled to survive in the economies. So while the Holocaust may have planted the seed of preventing mass tragedies, Cole was having you work to protect the white genocide virus, which kills two billion. I Between did this not know Dexter's about background, this. You can tell this was being made during the height of War on Terror. Not to mention the virus map. This is the official European outage atlas. Oh. There's a good amount to unpack with that one. Due to two billion people dying, this is the one thing the opposition tried to change. They had even tried to influence Cole more suddenly, causing him to take his vacation, but since he reached the wrong conclusion anyways, he had to die. It's also mm. pointed out that Dexter's entire family would have died in this plague. Oh. Now you can hang around and wait for Mother to call back. You okay, Fable? Oh yeah, I was yawning. Sorry about okay. that. Or go with him and join the opposition. Mm. What the hell do we do now, brother? The end. What yeah. a turn that took. The idea of using time travel to prevent some kind of tragedy is very common in this genre. Yeah. But it's usually not dropped right at the very end, and in this case, only for one event. In this case, the loss of life seems massive enough to consider it. But yeah. it still seems underwritten. Like, maybe Morris should have been horrified by the death camp, and Dexter would say, that's how it is, and we can't change it. 
and then he'd have to face a much larger mass death event which affects him personally. And then he could get the same speech back at him from Cole about how all this will actually be a valuable lesson in the future. Yeah. It just doesn't bring it up directly with its characters or fluid ideas like relativism or anything else. Instead, Dr. Cole just comes across like a moron. He's more interested yeah. in painting Vesuvius erupting and just seems completely unconcerned with anyone suffering around him. Because in his mind, it's already happened, everyone is dead, and it shouldn't change. But the organization is made up from people from all across time, where all kinds of events would affect them personally. Yeah. The problem is the overall plot and characters have felt so thin to this point, it's hard to tell if you're doing the heavy lifting for the game. They throw out an abrupt reveal, and then it all ends on a cliffhanger. Dark Days Teach Valuable Lessons also isn't happening in the game itself, so I'm curious what Cole's argument there would be. Hmm. It does give you something to ponder on over nothing, but it's not the strength of the game. The appeal here is gunning down primitive screwheads. Oh. When you're done, there is an instant action mode. You can re-enter any mission with a custom loadout and some altered game settings. But by this point, you're Cowboy probably done. Action where a lot of the team did move on to do interesting things, but no sequel or replacement to this one. I do wish there Again, was a sequel. you don't really need to that see this better. one out. It's buggy, awkward, and stiff. But there's so much passion on display for trying to make these areas feel authentic. It could be done better today, tell. but I'd imagine it'd be hard to get the budget to pull that off. Even in the state it's in, it can have striking imagery. And the feeling of being in a proper battle that some FPSs now don't pull off. There are some fun gimmicks and set pieces, but nothing I feel tempted to come back to. So next time, there will be a much more polished time travel game. But as far Which as a one? great idea goes, I think this could still be the best. It's just the execution. We're almost there, boys. I, I sneaky st Well, I hope you guys like that. I did play that game when I was younger. Actually, at a really bad point in my time, I was just trying to focus on the game. Anyway, that actually, now that I think about it, brought up some bad memories. Huh. Well, I'm going to deal with my trauma later, probably never, and just lock it up again. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you guys later.